You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. With humility, we pray that the history of this day will guide us to a better future for our nation. Now yield back. Gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Long. Gentleman's recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And we have never ever in the history of this country seen a presidency like this one. Once the president was sworn in, 19 minutes later, the Washington Post said impeachment begins today. A million women marched the next day on Washington. Bank of America, Starbucks, both that supported Hillary Clinton, had their windows broken out here in Washington because people were so upset that this man was elected president of the United States. He's had his, held, his head held underwater for almost three years now, ne never coming up for a breath of air. Just keep pushing him down. Lowest black unemployment ever. Lowest Hispanic unemployment ever. Highest stock market ever. Gentlemen's very time's expired. Lowest unemployment in years. And Gentlemen from serve the balance of my time. I yield back. Reserves? Yes. Gentleman from Georgia. Madam Speaker, I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Fortenberry. Gentleman's recognized for 30 seconds. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. I have been concerned since the beginning of this impeachment process that it has been driven by a predetermined guilty verdict. It's unfair, it's wrong, and now every future president, Democrat or Republican, will have to worry that the impeachment process will be driven as a blunt force political instrument. It's been said that this day is sad. It's not sad, it's regrettable, but this day will end shortly. The House has had its cathartic moment. Tomorrow will begin a new day. Let's get back to work. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman. Of course, uh, you're watching. Let's go back to it. That's the impeachment um, uh, the, on the House floor where Republicans and Democrats uh, have been speaking for the last several hours. Frankly, it's been uh, lots of comedy on the side of the Republican Party. Y'all, they've literally had individuals comparing the impeachment of Donald Trump to Jesus being crucified and also to Pearl Harbor. Uh, if you want to talk about how crazy it is, now you just heard one of the one of the Republicans talk about how uh, all these things are happening and how unemployment is so low. That has nothing to do with a president lying and a president trying to asking a foreign entity to investigate a political rival. Nothing, nothing. And so we're almost at the point of where this is over. Because normally what happens all day, it's a Republican, a Democrat, Republican, and Democrat. And so the last three individuals who have been talking were Republicans. Uh, they've given them 30 seconds, so clearly there's a time limit. You know what? Let's just go back. Let's hear some more of the comedy. Go right ahead. I'm voting no. Impeachment is not in the best interest of this country. And in fact, it has only deepened the partisan divide that truly plagues this country. When the sun comes up tomorrow, I pray with all my heart that the anger and the division in this chamber will give way to an honorableness and a productivity and a time of working together. I yield back. Gentleman from California. Madam Speaker, I reserve. All right, so again, um, and so I think the Democrats are about to speak now, so let's go back. It looked like they went back uh, to the Democratic side. Uh, let's hear who on the Democratic side who's coming up. Gentlemen's recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. True. Yeah, that's one of the, that's, that's one of the Republican speakers. President. All right, so earlier, uh, Nancy Pelosi got, got, got everything started, uh, Speaker of the House, where she laid out exactly why Donald Trump uh, is going to be impeached by the House only the third time in American history that has taken place, President Andrew Johnson, uh, as well as President Bill Clinton. Here's what Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, had to say earlier today. My colleagues, this morning and every morning, when we come together, members rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Every day, all across America, children in school, members of the military, officials and those uh, civically engaged also pledge allegiance to the flag. Let us recall 
what that pledge says. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The republic for which it stands is what we are here to talk about today, a republic if we can keep it. We gather today under the dome of this temple of democracy to exercise one of the most solemn powers that this body can take, the impeachment of the President of the United States. No member, regardless of party or politics, comes to Congress to impeach a president. But every one of us, as our first act as a member of Congress, stood on this historic House floor before our beautiful American flag and raised our hands in this sacred oath. I do sw solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So help me God. For 230 years, members have taken that sacred oath, which makes us custodians of the Constitution. When our founders declared independent and established a new nation, they crafted a system of government unlike one ever seen before, a republic, starting with the sacred words, we the people. For centuries, Americans have fought and died to defend democracy for the people. But, very sadly now, our Founders' vision of a republic is under threat from actions from the White House. That is why today, as Speaker of the House, I solemnly and sadly open the debate on the impeachment of the President of the United States. If we do not act now, we would be derelict in our duty. It is tragic that the President's reckless actions make impeachment necessary. He gave us no choice. What we are discussing today is All the right, folks. Now, if y'all really want to laugh, uh, here is an interview that Wolf Blitzer did with Donald Trump, where literally, literally, he talks about impeaching Bush for lying. The greatest liar who's ever been in the Oval Office actually said impeach a Republican president for lying. Y'all watch this. Nancy Pelosi, the speaker. Well, you know, when she first got in and was named speaker, I met her, and I'm very impressed by her. I think she's a very impressive person. I like her a lot. But I was surprised that she didn't do more in terms of Bush and going after Bush. It was almost, it just seemed like she was going to really look to impeach Bush and get him out of office, which personally I think would have been a wonderful thing. They're impeaching him? Absolutely, for the war. For the war. Because of the conduct of the well, war. Well, he lied. He got us into the war with lies. And, I mean, look at the trouble Bill Clinton got into with something that was totally unimportant. And they tried to impeach him, which was nonsense. And yet Bush got us into this horrible war with lies, by lying, by saying they had weapons of mass destruction, by saying all sorts of things that turned out not to be true. Yeah, you got to love it. <laughs> There's always a video or a tweet of this fool, Donald Trump, saying something. <laughs> he said George W. Bush, Republican, should have been impeached for lying about the war. Mm. Ain't that grand. Here's some other video that from earlier today of the sparring back and forth on the floor of the U.S. House Representatives in Washington, D.C. Madam Speaker, I rise today feeling the full weight of my duty as a member of this august body, reflecting upon our oath of office to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It is my sincere belief that under the circumstances that bring us here today, there is only one path for us to take to fulfill that oath. Thomas Paine, in this first of a series of pamphlets entitled The American Crisis, published 243 years ago tomorrow, intoned that these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldiers and sunshine patriots will, in this crisis, shrink 
from the service of their country. But he that stands it by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. These words were written at a time when our founders were rebelling against the tyrannical rule of the British monarchy. Today, we have a president who seems to believe he is a king or above the law. Payne warned us that so unlimited a power can belong only to God Almighty. My faith leads me to take very seriously the final words of our oath to faithfully discharge the duties of the office, so help me God. Madam Speaker, three days ago, I joined with a bipartisan delegation of our colleagues celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. We laid wreaths at the memorials of Generals George Patton and Anthony McAuliffe. We visited foxholes that were occupied by some brave soldiers who fought in some of the worst winter weather ever visited upon a battlefield. And we visited the Luxembourg American Cemetery, the final resting place of thousands of them and General George Patton. They were not summer soldiers in their efforts 75 years ago to preserve the Republic and we must not be sunshine patriots today in our efforts to protect the Constitution upon which this great Republic stands. While our fight is not in the trenches of battlefields, but in the hallowed halls of this Congress, our duty is no less patriotic. George Washington, in his farewell address to the nation, counseled America that the Constitution is sacredly obligatory upon all. It is in that spirit that we proceed today. Donald Trump pressured a foreign government to target an American citizen for political gain and at the same time withheld without justification $391 million in military aid to a vulnerable Ukraine as part of a scheme to solicit foreign interference in an American election. That is unacceptable. That is unconscionable. That is unconstitutional. There are some who cynically argue that the impeachment of this president will further divide an already fractured union. But there is a difference between division and clarification. Slavery once divided the nation, but emancipators rose up to clarify that all men are created equally. Suffrage once divided the nation, but women rose up to clarify that all voices must be heard in our democracy. Jim Crow once divided the nation, but civil rights champions rose up to clarify that all are entitled to equal protection under the law. There is a difference between division and clarification. We will hold this president accountable for his stunning abuse of power. We will hold this president accountable for undermining our national security. We will hold this president accountable for corrupting our democracy. We will impeach Donald John Trump. We will clarify that in America, no one is above the law. Madam Speaker, I rise today to protect our democracy. Today, we take a stand against corruption and abuses of power. What we are doing here today is not only patriotic, it is uniquely American. America is a story of ordinary people confronting abuses of power with the steadfast pursuit of justice. Throughout our history, the oppressed have been relegated to the margins by the powerful, and each time we have fought back, deliberate in our approach, clear-eyed. Each generation has fought for the preservation of our democracy, and that is what brings us to the House floor today efficient and effective in the pursuit of our truth. Congress has done its due diligence. Today we send a clear message. We will not tolerate abuses of power from the President of the United States of America. The future of this nation rests in our hands. It is with a heavy heart but a resolved one 
And because I believe our democracy is worth fighting for, I will vote to impeach Donald J. Trump, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. And still I rise, Madam Speaker. I rise because I love my country. And Madam Speaker, shall any man be beyond justice? This is the question posed in 1787 by George Mason at the Constitutional Convention. Shall any man be beyond justice? Madam Speaker, if this president is allowed to thwart the efforts of Congress with a legitimate impeachment inquiry, the president will not only be above the law, he will be beyond justice. We cannot allow any person to be beyond justice in this country. In the name of democracy, on behalf of the Republic, and for the sake of the many who are suffering, I will vote to impeach, and I encourage my colleagues to do so as well. No one is beyond justice in this country. Throughout this process, the American people have learned of bungling foreign policy decisions, but we have not heard evidence beyond a reasonable doubt of bribery or extortion. Allegations of these two crimes aren't even mentioned in the articles of impeachment being debated today. But today, we have seen a rush process divide our country. Today, accusations have been hurled at each other, questioning one another's integrity. Today, a dangerous precedent will be set, impeachment becoming a weaponized political tool. We know how this partisan process will end this evening, but what happens tomorrow? Can this chamber put down our swords and get back to work for the American people? This institution has a fabled history of passing legislation that has not only changed our country, but has inspired the world. This feat has been possible because this experiment we call America has one perpetual goal, make a more perfect union. We can contribute to this history if we recognize the simple fact that way, way more unites our country than divides us. Tomorrow, can we start focusing on that? Madam Speaker, I rise with a heavy heart to support this resolution. When we came to Washington in 1961 to go on the Freedom Rise, we chose that day. When we came here on August 28, 1963, for the March on Washington, it was George Fulk. We met with a young president, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy. When we came here on August 6, 1965, for the signing of the Voting Rights Act, we were excited, hopeful. We met with President Lyndon Johnson, but today, this day, we didn't ask for this. This is a sad day. It is not a day of joy. Our nation is founded on the principle that we do not have kings, we have presidents. And the Constitution is our compasses. When you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. Our children and their children will ask us, what did you do? What did you say? For some, this vote may be hard, but we have a mission and a mandate to be on the right side of history. Uh, our course about 25 minutes ago, Auntie Maxine Waters, she spoke on the floor. Most of everybody else who talked had a minute. They didn't give her a minute. Here we go. Unfortunately, the rules of debate won't allow me to cite all of the reasons why this president should be impeached. There are many. However, Madam Speaker and members of this House, to quote the late Maya Angelou, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. This day was not inevitable, but it was predictable because this president has shown himself time and time again to believe that he is above the law and he has no respect for our constitution or our democracy. Based on all that we know about Donald Trump, 
We could have predicted he would have abused the power of the president by corruptly soliciting the government of Ukraine and the Ukrainian president Zelensky to publicly announce investigations into his political opponent, former Vice President Joseph R. Biden. This impeachment resolution includes evidence that this president withheld $391 million of taxpayer funds that Congress appropriated for the purpose of providing vital military and security assistance to Ukraine to oppose Russian aggression, another blatant abuse of power. Our investigations revealed that this president advanced a discredited theory promoted by Russia alleging that Ukraine, rather than Russia, interfered in the 2016 United States presidential election for corrupt purposes in pursuit of personal political benefit. Never before in our history have we experienced a president who has so clearly conducted himself in a manner offensive to and subversive of the Constitution and directed his cabinet members, executive branch agencies, and other White House officials to defy lawful subpoenas from Congress. Was he attempting to hide wrongdoing? It is without question that this president has demonstrated that he will remain a threat to national security and the Constitution if allowed to remain in office and has acted in a manner grossly incompatible with self-governance and the rule of law because at every turn he has shown us who he is. It is no secret that this president could have been impeached a long time ago. Today, we stand here with an irrefutable case and an indisputable set of facts that this president absolutely abused his power and obstructed Congress. Any other individual who would have been caught conducting themselves in the way this president has would have been prosecuted to the full extent of the law. It is shameful that any members of this House are willing to disregard the Constitution, turn a blind eye to hard facts, and ignore a confession from the President himself. History will remember those who were willing to speak truth to power. Yes, I call for Trump's impeachment early. This is our country. Our foremothers and our forefathers shed their blood to build and defend this democracy. I refuse to have it undermined. I wholeheartedly support this resolution. I'm proud that in the final analysis, justice will have been served in America and Donald Trump will have been Senator impeached. Ladies, time's expired. Gentleman from Georgia. Madam Speaker. All right now. Congresswoman Maxine Waters there. Uh, the conversation continues, folks, on the floor. Of the House joining me right now on the panel, Dr. Julian Malvo, economist, president emerita, been in college. Uh, also, Erica Savage Wilson, a host Savage Politics podcast, as well as Monique Presley, political analyst, crisis manager, and attorney. Um, this is the day Donald Trump is dreading. He has fled D.C. He's having some rally, <laughs> <laughs> having one of his love fest rallies uh, right. from his MAGA folks somewhere in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Uh, trying to <laughs> trying to avoid this, uh, he wants to change the channel. But the bottom line is, his ass about to get impeached. Oh yeah, and every channel has this on, every channel. So he can't he can't change the channel. That's where it is. But you know, Roland, you were talking about the hijinks and the comedy. The biggest comedy, I, he compared himself to the Salem, Salem witch trials. Oh, oh, that, that that letter he wrote to Pelosi was hilarious. And if, if you want to talk about how some folks have sold out. Uh, Hugh Hewitt, conservative, oh, used to make some sense. So this morning, I was in Atlanta for a meeting today, uh, and y'all, poor Hugh. Yeah, I bet. Oh, my God. He actually tweeted, Lord, let me, let me find this thing, y'all. It, it was so funny. Um, he, he actually he put that whole tried to suggest yeah. that the Trump letter is going to be go down in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... People are going to be studying it as the as the way uh, not uh, to leak. Y'all, it, it, it was so laughable. I mean, even other conservatives were like, Hugh, not, mm. bro, stop it. Yeah, just stop it. I mean, that, what's what's amazing to me, Erica, is that here you have individuals, Hugh Hewitt, Mark Levin. Mm. Sir Lindsey Graham, mm -hmm. all these folks spoke truthfully 
about Donald Trump before he get elected. Mm -hmm. They have sold their souls, yeah. Glenn Beck included, uh, numerous folks on Fox News, mm -hmm. have sold their souls to somebody who don't give a damn about them. Somebody who will throw his own people under the bus and bag it up, roll over, bag it up, and roll over. Right. That, to me, that, that means these people have no principles, no morals, no values. Absolutely. The grand old party has died as we know it. And I think it's also important for people to see the level of castration that these supposed leaders have allowed themselves um, on public domains uh, in, in um, the name of power and other things that we don't yet know. And I think that this is also a reason why it is of the utmost importance for people to understand that we cannot afford for a repeat of 2016. Um, that people that are talking about withholding their votes are folks that have no idea of how power um, is actually constructed. And so what we have got to do as a responsible body, as a collective of people, is over-index because it is, um, it is absolutely possible for these people to be voted out of their seat because there is nothing that we are seeing publicly that they won't do to appease their, their Lord and Savior, Donald John Trump. Uh, Mon Monique, when you look at where these Republicans stand, um, and you listen to the arguments that Adam Schiff a few moments ago said they won't defend what he did. Mm -hmm. They won't defend his conduct. They only say the process wasn't fair. Right. Mm. Right. Now, and, and in the law for all of the ones, and they, for the first, I think, like, seemed like 16 or 17 people that the GOP put up. It was all of the, the lawyers in the bunch. I was trying to figure out what the rhyme or reason was to who was getting most time, less time, because it was, they weren't going by seniority, whereas with the Democrats, it seemed like they worked, you know, they started big, worked their way through some of the younger members, and then got back up again. But um, when there's no substance, you argue process. I mean, that's... Yeah. That's what is done in the legal field. That's what's done here in this, you know, congressional <coughs> Like, my hall. client guilty as hell. But there's, <laughs> so, but, uh, let, let me... And, and see, but due process matters, mm -hmm. and, and process in this case for Donald Trump matters, but they don't even have a strong process argument because they're arguing against rules that... Everybody but agreed they agree to. to. <laughs> right, absolutely. You know, I mean, and, and the thing, but but there's been some mastery, in, t in my opinion, in terms of the Democrats. First when it was Nadler, then it transitioned to Schiff. They were oh, oh, ready. Oh, it was Schiff and Nadler. No, no, Nadler started the day. No, no, I'm sorry, today. I'm yeah. sorry. The, the, the whole impeachment inquiry began with Schiff, right. the Intelligence Committee, then went, went to Judiciary. Right, Go ahead. but for today, when after all of the... I mean, they moved to... For every, every one of these, they start with, let's go home and try again tomorrow. I mean, they do all of those. <laughs> right. And then when they yeah. finally got into it and started having these... You get, you get three hours, you get three hours, how are you going to use your three hours? And everybody's reserving and yielding and reserving. But what Nadler did, every time one of the GOP members would say something, he had a 30-second response right. prepared. Right. They weren't ready like that. They had to go ahead and catch up. But what he kept saying was, and now still, 10 people have gotten up and argued against process, and not one has argued for the legitimacy of the actions of this president. And that's what I'm hoping the American people will get out of this. There is no argument. Because if these Republicans had one... I mean, they're sycophants. They they bend over. They genuflect for him. They they literally, you know, lick his behind. So if they had an argument that they could come up with, they would have given it by now. But nobody, nobody has one. And I also saw today an interview. Um, Wolf Blitzer played an interview with the president before he was president in 2008. Oh yeah, we just, man, yeah. the decade has not been kind to that man's mental state. I Whoa. mean, he, Donald so Trump. Duh. There has okay. been significant decline. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. 
Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. <laughs>